How to guys, how's it going? So we're out here again after a week. Um, I had uh, relatives come in and visit for about four days and uh, that, you know, put me a little bit behind schedule. But I had a great time seeing them. There's a big old spider. Let's get rid of him real quick. Um, so yeah, we're coming out here today. Um, it rained all day yesterday, just torrential downpour. Um, but earlier this morning, we had a lot of wind come through. So that's helped dry things out just a wee bit. But brought some new gear out today that I'm very excited to try out right here. We have got an Ectos King Size 100% wool blanket. Um, I had them, they sent me two of these. Um, I've been sleep, sleeping with one on my bed uh, just, you know, night to night, and they're extremely comfortable. This is going to be the first night actually, you know, getting it out, because that's one of the biggest complaints um, that I've always had about, like, the uh, like the military wool blankets and, like, the surplus wool blankets is one. You know, normally, well, I mean, pretty much all of them is either twin size or slightly smaller, and they can be pretty inconsistent with, you know, their thickness, uh, the weave pattern, uh, the way that the edges are sewn. So I'm really excited to uh, to get these out and uh, really run them through the ringer. Um, and, you know, king size, we're, we're going to be good to go. Today, uh, this past week, the temperatures have been just completely menopausal. It's been, uh, it's been spiking up all the way up into the low 70s and then down into the high 30s at night. Today, the high is 69, that's what it's at at about right now. And then the low for the night is supposed to be 41 degrees. So I thought that'd be a great temperature to, uh, you know, to run this bad boy. And I found this spot right here because I intentionally did not bring a sleeping pad with me today. Um, but this is a very, very, like, plush area. There's lots of leaves, you know, falling now. Um, but this green stuff right here is just, like... I'm, I'm not concerned at all by, by having all this stuff, which will be underneath the emergency space blanket. And then I've brought the uh, the one wind half shelter. I'm just going to take and clear out some of these saplings. But for the most part, this area is about the perfect size, um, or should be. We get that set up, and then I brought out the uh, the new backpack for its first uh, its first real you know hiking session. Um, and I'll mainly be going over that pack and stuff whenever I show y'all my um, day pack hunting kit for this year. Okay, so this is from the company High Speed Daddy. They're the same ones that sent me that multicam wooby that I used in uh, the last out and we did with the canvas tarp. Uh, this is an extremely, like, well-made bag, and they market it as, like, a diaper bag. And, I mean, there's, it's essentially, I mean, it's still just, like, a very solid, um, you know, Molly-compatible bag i think it's 600 uh i think it's 600 d material uh waterproof um you know tons of cool features and then the other the thing that i guess is uh also part of the whole uh diaper bag selling point is it comes with this extra large changing pad and i mean for me this is going to make a phenomenal kneeling pad so i'm gonna go ahead and throw this back over here where we're going to be working I'll take and break down everything that I'll be carrying uh, for kind of like a day pack setup, uh, you know, for this hunting season. And it's going to be really nice having this changing pad too, because like you know, whenever you're taking, if you just come across a spot that you hadn't particularly planned on hunting, just throw that bad boy down, sit your cheeks on it, and now you ain't got to worry about getting wet. So I think that's a cool, very uh, you know, multifunctional feature. Uh, and that's one reason why uh, I was actually kind of excited to, to use that, is to show that, you know, that bag can be uh, very, very multifunctional. The way that I had this, you know, this is a king size 100% wool blanket, so it's heavy. The only the only thing that uh, I ever say about any backpack, it doesn't matter, um, it doesn't matter what it is, you know, attach a bedroll or attach, it could be a rain jacket, just have loops sewed into the bottom to where you can, you know, carry an additional something. Because especially if it's a raincoat or a poncho that you've used that's got wet, it'd be nice to be able to take and, you know, lash it onto the bottom. Um, so I had to take and, you know, use paracord and run that through the Molly webbing, but that's a really good test for the uh, the strength of the stitching because, you know, it pulls on it in a kind of un, uh, undesigned fashion. Oh, 
also want to be careful not to, you know, trample this stuff down too much before tonight gets here. This stuff, this green stuff, so tall you can't can't quite see where the uh, the actual base of some of these are because they tend to grow a little crooked. So now clearly y'all have seen me set up this uh, one wind half shelter a handful of times already, but in case you knew. But yeah, on the uh, as I was going in here, I probably I think I might have got it on, uh, got some of the audio. But as I was hiking in here, I took and heard a big old, a big old deer blowing somewhere in the in the distance after it heard me stomping through the woods. So that's always a a welcome sign. Because I think the one that I need it closest to is this one over here. Normally about like that right there. Might be just about perfect because we can we can bring it this way a little bit more, but. It'll be okay. And the ground is really soft, but we should be fine. I got t I got two uh, two of these I don't I don't know if it's pronounced honcho or honcho but I got two of these ponchos I brought two of them with me because I wanted to use one to cover the front of uh, of this and um, I wanted to have one in case it rains so this is a real tree one the other one is a uh, just like a regular woodland camo so we'll leave that out but it's still very damp. green side down help the body heat do its reflecting duties um, I mean, I'm not lying to you when I say that this section of ground right here is very lofty a lot of cushion to it and I think it'll be plenty insulated once we're laying on top of this because I think I'm only going to need like you can take and wrap this thing around you about three times so, I mean if anything I could have two layers of this underneath me and one on top and with that flannel shirt that I brought I'll be golden Go ahead and get the wool blanket rolled out of hair that way. We can get an idea how we're going to get it on here because we probably keep the, the head part kind of rolled like that right there. But hey, spider, what are you doing? I thought with all this cold weather we had, we'd be uh, 
we'd be about done. So this thing right here is folded over. Right now, I could sleep in that, and we got two layers underneath, two layers on top. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of versatility with that right there. Now let's take and see if we can do something with this poncho because I've not used this one yet. I've used the woodland one just in the rain, but I've not used either of them any type of shelter. Because since we have two stakes left with uh, this thing, we can actually use them with this. And one thing about these ponchos that are pretty different, like I've not really seen these before, is they got chest vents in the event you want to, uh, you know, vent your chest. I'm probably going to want the, the like, airflow. I want it like open kind of at my head. But I think this thing's going to pretty much cover the whole thing if we go from one end to the other. Because with these, this thing right here is, is like almost just as long that end's hanging over. And what I've done with that one is, that corner over there, I uh, took and run down to a smaller sapling that was behind it at a corner so that this would overlap a little bit right there at that edge where it's not quite overlapping. Um, doesn't matter at all. Like I didn't expect it to run this uh, much of a length of it. Um, but now, I was just going to see kind of how, if it would be better to run a line out like this. Right there is your uh, standing perspective. So, you know, right here is your doorway. So we can crawl in there and, you know, have our thing. And then we got wind protection from there. I mean, you know, obviously some airflow will get underneath. This is what the uh, the overall interior is looking like. So tons of room. This is something to where, uh, I mean, with this uh, one wind shelter, you, you could squeeze two people in there. But, uh, like, if you take and add a tarp or... Uh, if you had a poncho or an additional tarp, you could easily sleep two or three people under here. Uh, um, we got this set up pretty quickly, but I need to gather some hardwood and stuff because um, I have brought a hamburger steak and a new, uh, like a new stainless steel grill thing. Um, that's a part of another whole stove set that I'll explain once we get to cooking. But um, we'll go and get a fire going. That way we can have some... Uh, some hardwood coals uh, ready to go and we can uh, fry up our hamburger steak because I am getting a wee bit hungry. Alrighty guys, it is uh, starting to cool off a bit and I hiked not too far away from where uh, we got camp set up. I don't want to have a fire too close to uh, either that sealed nylon half shelter or the um, that poncho for obvious reasons. I don't want to have any embers burn a hole in it. So trying out this ex, um, Exotrek, Exotrek, ex Exotrek, once again, if I get the name wrong, I'll put it on the screen. But I'm really impressed with the uh, the battery life on it. I just uh, have been working on configuring the settings and everything to the, uh, to, uh, to my desired effect. So that's something that I'm still working on and the reason why I haven't used it more recently, but it'll definitely get used a lot uh, this hunting season. There are a couple of new do jigs that I'd like to show you. Is this right here is a ferro rod paracord tender whistle combination from a company called Atomic Bear. And I've used it to start two bonfires so far. So that's why you see it's been, it has been strucken. And you gotta link the paracord with the whistle. And then right here is a waterproof um, canister that you can put tender in. I've not refilled it because I use the 
one that come with it and then you have the striker um, I'm still just going to use my knife because that's always easier and then whenever I'm carrying it in my bag or if you got it clipped on the outside of something throw a rubber band around it and that keeps it from you know clanking around then the other thing to show you I don't know how well to do this but this is a knife um, made by a company called Holtzman's um, Holtzman's Gorilla Survival is the uh, is the full name but if you look up Holtzman online you can find their website and obviously this stuff will be linked in the description if you're interested but so far um, I've only used it for some very uh, minimal carving tasks but it did come out of the box razor sharp uh, it's got a really nice spine on it and then the sheath also has a ferro rod it's a kydex sheath but it throws really nice sparks with the spine but it's a smaller ferro rod oh i dropped my rubber band um so i'll put that in my pocket so i don't lose it so what we'll be doing though is using the back of this knife with this ferro rod and oh jesus christ this thing has a phenomenal spine for throwing sparks off a ferro rod let me tell you <laughs> And then since things are still pretty wet out, not you know nearly as bad as what we've uh, done in some of the past videos, I have a piece of four strand hemp rope that is like very, very saturated in wax. So I'm gonna take and cut off a little section about that big. We're gonna ruffle her up and then we'll, uh, we'll spark it up with the ferro rod. Um, but before we do that, I have got to go collect some wood because I've got to go around. I've got to take and go around and find some hardwood. I'm going to take and try to find some fallen white oak mainly. Um, and then, you know, we'll use pine to uh, for the kindling to get things initially started. All righty. So I took and kicked out a nice little divot right there. And in doing so, this big rock was right there and so was this one. And since they're about the same uh depth i think i'll be able to take and use them to put my grade on once we get things uh, going okay, so now what i'm gonna do this right here is a pretty dry leaf just to keep this off the ground they can spread that apart pretty good that might that should be enough i think i'm gonna find that sweet spot on this knife She's lit. Might need to angle it just a wee bit. There we go. Put that away. So that little small stuff right there at the very beginning, that was just a little bit of pine. Everything else we're going to use is some maple and white oak that I found. And there's a really large piece over there that I'm going to have to either find a Y branch to break it up with or I have to go get the, the old larger kukri. Treat these pieces right here with some of the dampest ones. So I'm going to kind of set those right there at the side. That way we don't interfere with that too much. Kind of dry itself out. Right, there we go. I'm going to start with this piece and that other one. And then we can put the end of this into the fire and burn it down because this pit right here is full now. So we'll let that take and get burnt down to uh, the appropriate coal levels. And then I will bring y'all back when it's time to uh, fricassee the food. Okay, so the fire is about where we want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, 
get the green beans open and get them in the pot and then I don't think I'm not sure if I'll be able to uh, have them at the exact same time so I want to do the green beans first because you know they're already cooked so we can uh, we can always just throw those back on and warm them up some more so I'll spare you the uh, monotonous task of I'm gonna drain those a little bit there we go get out of there so there you go a canteen cups about four fifths of uh, a can of green beans in case that's a question you've ever asked yourself at some point in your life and yeah i took these two sticks right here and laid those off because that is what i'm going to do i'm going to use to put the uh, the grate on with so hopefully i can kindly balance this somewhere in that area and then we'll just take her on and off and kind of stir it as we need. Oh, oh, oh one thing for sure, it's hot on your hand. I forgot to hit record right there, but what I done was is I changed the direction of that pot so it's warming the beans now, it's not really over anything. Put our two sticks here, laid our grill over the top of it, and now, hmm, hear that sizzle, baby. I'm not sure if the fork or the spoon will be best for flipping it, but we might need both. That's going to be good, baby. I think I'm going to take um, the beans off and at least give them a good stir. Oh, yeah. That worked perfect. Nothing's burnt, nothing's seared. And since, I mean, this is a new grate, I'm hoping that this isn't going to stick, but. You never know whenever you first go to use something. Hot, hot, hot. Wobbly on me here, buddy. Oh, that's hot. Gloves make it a lot easier. Oh, there we go. Ha 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 ho 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 ho. I promise I'm not exaggerating for old dramatic effect but that did not feel good that is a lot hotter than it looks but that burger is looking sexy and then what i think i'm going to have to do is this right here this bottom part of that canteen set's going to have to be essentially my plate because i don't have really any other option so i probably have to split that in half and put it in here and then I brought I think I forgot to carry it over here but I brought a, real, a small bottle of A1 sauce there's barely any left in this bottle so it wasn't a big deal to uh, to pack out okay losing it great a little bit okay Oh. oh yeah. They cut her in half. Cause when it comes when it comes to cheeseburgers, I like mine to have a lot of pink on the inside. But when it comes to my hamburger oh when it comes to my hamburger steak, I kinda like it to be just a little bit more done. Grill was a win. Well, that didn't work worth jack. Set that right there to cool down for a bit. 
Oh. oh, yes, sir. Well, that, this right here is going to be a very welcome meal. Yes. I'm taking. Probably end up using the last of this A1 sauce. Got to go for the old taste test. Mmm. Ain't made up. <clears throat> and if you're curious what I seasoned it with, um, put some uh, seasoned salt. Uh, some garlic powder or gar and garlic salt. Um, mix in a little bit of A1 so it would marinate with the meat. Um, what was that? I put one more thing in it, but You know, when it comes to green beans, you know, canned green beans are okay. Like, they're nowhere near as good as, like, homemade green beans cooked with fat back or with a little bit of bacon in them. But, um, I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I've not, I've not really been able to tell the difference between different brands of green beans. So, if you have a recommendation, let me know. Make sure we got all the sauce out of this bad boy. Well, guys, if you can't, uh, <clears throat> if you haven't noticed already, the um, the crickets and stuff are already out and chirping because the sun's going to, like, we're going to lose sunlight in probably 35 minutes. Like, the sun's going to set in about 30, 35 minutes. So, uh, I'll make sure this burns down, finish eating this delicious food, clean up the utensils, put the grill away, and then I will, um, before we go to bed, I've got some uh, new lights that I want to show you that are pretty dope. I've been messing around with them just outside at the house and stuff and i'm really really like blown away by them so uh i'll be showing you those because those are going to be um two things that are going to be a, a new addition and a huge part of uh, this year's like hunting kit for whenever i'm in the mountains um so yeah we'll do that in a minute Okay, I've got my tripod as low as it'll go. I don't know how well this is working. I know that the uh, my action camera probably it'll be a little bit too low light, but we might try that later once I get those lights out. Honestly, if there's a way that I can use this bag with the contents that are in it to rest my wee weary head. these things in it. I'm trying to keep my knees from getting moist. I mean, this is essentially a, a stealth shelter. As you can see, this Ectos wool blanket, two there, two here. And, oh. I, mean, I got tons of them right there for my head. So we'll just do it the old fashioned way and see if that's enough. Cause I mean, they're still, like, it's a king size, so, god dang, I mean, just doing it folded like this, two people could sleep in this thing easy. It's all the way over here, if you can see that, all the way to the back of the shelter. So, it's not going to be an issue at all to take and, oh, hello, get snuggled up under here. And this side pocket where I got this uh, six-inch... Israeli bandage is probably going to be 
where I rest my head. But I, I might end up having to take this flannel off, truthfully, under this. If it, I mean, if it's only getting down to 49 degrees, because I know there's like there's airflow coming through both <clears throat> both ends of this, but uh, it's still going to hold heat more than you'd think. Also, I was thinking, I don't know if this would. You could take a stick and put it through where that hood is on that hammock, but. I think we'll hold off, so I'll get back with you guys whenever we uh, pull them lights out because I'm really excited to show you that. Oh, yeah, guys, one more thing I wanted to mention is this Holtzman knife. I am uh, I'm taking it off before I go to bed because one thing to note that I forgot to mention, it has a sharp, it, sorry if I can show you, it has a sharpening stone along the edge and like the bottom corners of that are, you know, pretty, I mean, they're very squared off, so they're kind of sharp. So, like, you know, if you're in a sleeping bag or a wool blanket or something, they could potentially uh, tear a hole or, you know, at the very least kind of screw with the threads of the material. So I would recommend making sure that you would remove that before you, you know, bed down. It's been about another hour, so now it is time for me to show y'all these uh, cool new gadgets. Now, I know I showed this in the, um, the last, you know, the canvas tent video, but this is the Cyan Sky HS3R headlamp. Full metal body, waterproof down to, I believe, two meters, and this thing is insanely bright. Um, I'll take and turn the uh, the flash off on this and kind of give you an idea of, um, of what it's working with. It's kind of got two separate preset modes. Right now, I got it to where when you take and first turn it on, it's on uh, eco mode, and so... You know, this camera is not going to pick it up too much, but eco mode is more than enough for just like doing stuff around camp. And if whenever this thing's fully charged, eco mode lasts for, it says 60 hours. So, I mean, I'm not going to take and sit around and stare at this thing for 60 hours, but that's, even if it was half of that, that's pretty solid. But then with this side, we got a red blinking light. So, you know, a good old SOS deal just to get somebody's attention. Click it again. You got a solid red light. And, uh, you know, anybody of any of y'all that are experienced in the outdoors know that, like, red light's good because it doesn't screw up your night vision. So if you're just doing, like, you know, minimal tasks around camp, reading maps, uh, red light's the way to go. Then if you take and hold it down, it switches over to its white light functions. Okay, so the first function is low, which is different from eco. Eco can only be accessed whenever you're on, uh, you're in the modes that allow red light as well. But this is low, then you got medium, which medium is like, I mean, if you're going to be hiking through the woods is, I would say medium is the way to go. Low is fine for like once you're in an area, like you're around camp, you know what you got going on. Then you got high, which is already ridiculous in my opinion. And then you have got the insane turbo mode. And I mean, y'all seen how small this light is? I mean look at that and on turbo mode if you're fully charged it says it has a runtime of 45 minutes so in my book that's pretty crazy and then that's switching it back down to low like i said i think medium is really the sweet spot for this thing plus um it's usb-c chargeable carry a little battery bank with you and uh, you got a headlamp that you know you could literally use for days at a time okay and then now my new go-to flashlight it, so Prometheus Lights is the one that contacted me, but then this is sold under, uh, I believe it's 4.7. This is the MX3F Flood, which I think were the MX3 Flood, and that's what the F stands for. Um, but this bad boy right here is one of the most solid feeling flashlights that I've that I've ever held. And look, once again, I have no, I'm not affiliated, no affiliate links. Um, not paid to say any of this. Um, they, you know, simply, they did take and send it to me and I'm just going to test it out. You know, if it breaks, it breaks. If, or if any of this stuff screws up, then, you know, I'll let you guys know. I'll let them know they can improve. And then, you know, we ain't just, uh, you know, blowing smoke up each other's hind end. But this thing is also very bright. So let me turn this light off. And obviously this one's a lot bigger, but you take and hold the button down. And then there is your, you know, your low light i don't think this one's an eco mode i think this is just meant to be like the lowest option and that has an extremely long run time and then to progress through the different light modes you just hold it down for a little bit longer hold it down for a little bit longer and then there you go that's the ultra 
and this thing when it says it is a floodlight it is not joking like i said i hate that right now we simply just do not have you know like a football field to uh to fully display this thing plus you know a camera can only capture so much but it has this uh this right here is the lens that comes on it standard um i believe is the spotlight lens and then it comes with another lens that uh, gives you an even wider um field of view with the light um it also comes with a way to change out the power knob and uh you know like i said if you want to read about it there will be a link in the description to this light but this light and the headlamp i just showed you is going to like they're it's going to be my main kit options um, but prometheus also sent me one of their mini lights um which is also insanely bright and it's a part of my edc kit which i'll be showing soon and then as i mentioned during the beginning of the video i'll be showing you guys my day pack hunting kit and then uh at some point after that i'm going to show you guys my overnight hunting loadout so be looking forward to that but i will talk to you guys uh in probably about 45 minutes whenever i take and crawl into that cozy looking wool blanket and uh, start counting sheep my bag resituated that on there and so um your boy here did forget to bring something i forgot to bring another pair of socks so with that uh in mind i am going to be sleeping with my boots on which i know some people freak out about that but i do it all the time and rubber on this wool blanket will be a good durability test so we'll call it part of that um don't see any creepy crawlies hiding in me wool blanket so oh. but yeah i'm gonna take i'm gonna take this shimag off i'll just stuff it underneath here for a little bit of extra cushion the old dorothy boot click to try to keep as much garbage out from this if, as i can we'll get all snuggled in here This Ectos blanket, truthfully, I'm digging. I mean, like I guess I've been using it at the house too. Feels so good. I'm telling you, this this section of ground that I found is so soft and lush with this like green stuff in the leaves. Well, anyways, guys, appreciate you watching so far. I am going to take and try to uh, try to go to sleep. I'll probably, um, as usual, I'll, I'll probably listen to a podcast or some music or something, and I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, guys. <laughs> oh, let me tell you. I looked at the weather, and it uh, <laughs> it actually it actually got down to uh, about 37 degrees last night instead of the uh, forecasted 41. So, yeah, I'm very very glad that uh. I had the like able to have like two layers of this wool blanket over top of me because you know I mentioned about, I mentioned about I thought I might be able to take this flannel off and add it to my pillow situation, but considering it's the only other piece of uh, clothing that I brought, let's just say it's one of those it's one of those mornings where getting up to pee was uh not not um not a desired task because the other thing too is uh like it got where about like 3 a.m it got uh pretty like windy um like i don't know i'd say probably somewhere between 10 and 15 mile an hour wind so like it was really nice having this poncho up front 
because the wind was kind of just like you know changing directions and everything and it was definitely kind of blowing through the left and right so if i would have known that then i would have taken like kind of pitched this poncho to be more like a straight wall design but i mean this uh this ectos wool blanket done a phenomenal job like after after putting both layers on well i mean like both layers are already on but after taking like snuggling up under here it, like it it insulated very well But he, I mean, it is. It's interesting how quick the uh, how quick the temperature can change because it really that was surprising. But it's just now it's just now about seven. Uh, it's about seven fifteen. So uh, I think I'm just going to take and lay here a little bit longer and enjoy just you know being warm because. Uh, I'm probably gonna take since I don't have any other uh, like any other you know shirt or anything and just uh, kind of pack up a little bit at a time because my hands are gonna get cold as I you know get everything situated so as always guys I appreciate you taking the time to watch and join the adventure I'm really looking forward I mean I'm enjoying the cold weather trust me I get out I mean it it feels it feels good so appreciate you watching make sure you hit the thumbs up button uh subscribe if you haven't already share the channel and the videos with your friends don't forget to check the description box to link some other channels and then links to uh you know uh most of this most of the stuff that i use you know if uh you know not affiliate links all that good old stuff and uh make sure you hit me up in that comment section so uh until the next one guys and hopefully the weather gets colder Adios.